Yo! Yo! What's up? I'm Adam. I'm Josh. And Josh is here to educate us on what One Lake is and just like what are the possibilities with it. So Josh, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having it's me. Always a pleasure. Can you let folks know like who you are and what you do? So yeah, I'm Josh Kaplan. I'm the I lead product management for One Lake at Microsoft. Yeah, we've been working on some pretty new, exciting stuff that we're you know, real happy to show you right now. I bet you've been you've been eager to tell people. Eager, about keeping this. it under wraps for a long time. Yes. All right, so I guess let's just start off. What is One Lake? What's the purpose behind it? We're trying to make this into the OneDrive of data. Tagline aside there, you think about really what OneDrive and services like that have done for file sharing. Way back to the days before we had them and we would go and we'd rack these servers and we'd set up these network file shares and some cases FTPs yeah. and you would put files in there. You'd use those folders of servers and everything to share files. And yeah. it works, it shares files. Yeah. But you had to do build that solution yourself and then compare that today with dedicated SaaS services like OneDrive that have enabled file sharing more more directly and the type of collaboration you can now do. We want to bring that to data lakes. Okay. You buy storage, you don't buy a lake, and then you implement a data lake pattern. And when we talk to a lot of customers, they have these visions of these very pristine single data lakes for their entire organization. Mm. And just by having one of these, they, it would enable so many things. You could just easily land all types of data into one place. Because it's in one place, you can easily blend it together, transform it together. There's less things to secure, there's less things to govern, there's less things to manage, there's mm. less things to discover which should make it easier to get into the hands of users and applications. Sometimes technical, but most often it's organizational challenges, people challenges. It's hard to coordinate and drive everything into yep. one lake. Yep. It actually turns out to be easier to create multiple. You end up with lots of these multiple siloed lakes and to really get to that value, you start building solutions on top of it to break down those silos, to move data around. Yep. These are expensive and complicated solutions that you have to build and you have to maintain. With one lake, we're gonna give you one lake for the entire organization, like just like you get one OneDrive. You don't think about these things with OneDrive. Yep. It's there, you'll have a bit now a data lake as a service, that whole solution built out of the box for you and you can just start putting your data in there, collaborating over it and using it. So for my tenant, there's just one one lake. There is one one lake, uh, not never a two lake or a zero lake. <laughs> It'll be one one lake for the entire tenant. And you didn't have to set it up, you didn't have to provision it. It'll be there. And no matter what you do, when you start loading data to Fabric, it'll be going into one lake. Nice. Enough of all this talking. You know, we like to do it here in Guyana Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to your machine. You know what we're looking at right now? We're looking at a workspace. We are looking at a workspace. And okay. this is what one lake really looks like from the UI, from the perspective of Fabric. It looks like the workspace. And you can have many workspaces in Fabric. They're very lightweight, very easy to create. Yeah, I can browse through them all here in the UI experience. But, but only one one lake. Multiple only one, workspaces. One yeah, one and lake. it's the workspace spaces that actually allow multiple teams to collaborate over the same data lake. Is it and, fair to think of a workspace as kind of like a folder structure within one lake? And that's what it's going to ultimately translate over to, is a okay. place in one lake. You see in the workspace I'm in, I have a few of these fabric data items here. I have a data warehouse, I have a lake house. And let's actually open up one of these warehouses real quick. Inside the warehouse, you'll see, all right, I have a schema in here and I have a table in here. This is the UI view of the world. If I actually flip over down to the one lake view, you're not gonna see workspaces and data items. You're gonna see files, you're gonna see folders. So because we're the OneDrive for data, you can explore your files right from Windows. You'll be able to do that here with, with uh, one link as well. So I can just open up File Explorer actually. And in File Explorer, yeah, you'll see a one like option here. And I see all my workspaces, the same workspaces you saw in the UI, but here they're, they're folders. Yeah. And going into that workspace, you'll see those, those two data items that you saw in the UI, the warehouse that I had in the lake house. And since we were in the warehouse before, I'll go into the warehouse. I'll see a, a folder for tables. Under that folder for tables, I'll see a schema. Yep. The same And the one table we saw before. Wow, I mean, that looks exactly like OneDrive. <laughs> it makes it a lot more approachable. Uh, there's nothing extra to install other than the, the one like client here for Windows. And then it's just naturally interacting with it uh, like you would. And so that means like even from like Windows Explorer, I can just drag and drop files. And like if I've got some Excel files or other things like. You can, but each of these data items has a different way of bringing data into one lake. So we're in the warehouse right now and data warehouse is going to be fully transactional and it's going to be, you're going to work with it through SQL. So I want to bring data to a warehouse. I'm going to do it through SQL. We have our one table in our small warehouse at the moment. Let's create a second table. Okay. And we'll use this one to track the guy in the cube uh, merchandise sales. Yeah, there we go. So I'll create a table here, all T SQL. And let's insert one row. I know those banana shirts are very popular. So popular, and I buy 50 of them. Oh. Insert that one row. All right, we create a table, create the one row. So load it through T SQL. At this point, I don't really see a data lake, right? Yeah. If I'm coming in and I'm used to working with a data warehouse, so this is the data warehouse to me. Yeah. Same T SQL experience I'm used to is T SQL editor in here. We come back to our lake view and let's actually go and refresh this screen a little bit. Not only do we see the table, when I open it up, we see a delta log. This data is actually not stored in some internal proprietary format, which you typically get when you try to do something with SQL. It's stored in delta lake format. 
I mean, this is open source. By keeping right. it in open format, you can use it anywhere with Fabric, and not just Fabric. This is an open data lake. So any application that knows how to talk to ADLS Gen 2 can yep. talk to one lake and work with this yeah. data. Typically, a data lake, you can look, put any kind of data in there, not just structured data, right. and you don't have to necessarily do it through SQL. If we go back to the UI for one second, we'll see the lake house we had in here. Now let's ignore tables for a moment. Let's look at the file section. File section lets you put anything you want in it. So let's actually get some data in there. You can browse, go back and browse my workspace in the File Explorer here. See our lake house, and we'll see the same folder structure, including the file section. And I'll take some images. I'll just copy and paste them directly in here. A bunch of different folders, a bunch of different files, and, and, and company logo images right here. Nice. All I do is ref refresh here. That data is already there. So unstructured data, any file format is welcome in one lake. Ultimately, it's data lake. Everything's a file. Yeah. But we can do special things with tables. Okay. If you store your data in Delta Lake format in the table section, we know it's a table. And we can make it work automatically with any engine in Fabric. Oh. So I can run SQL on top of this, I can run Spark on top of this, I can start putting Power BI reports directly on here. But how do we get this in here? I didn't go and upload every table from Windows. Data got in here a few different ways. These tables here, we're building these through Databricks. We actually switched Databricks to go ahead and use one link. Because behind the scenes, like I said, if you actually look, these are all files. And to access these files, we support the same ADLS Gen 2 APIs. And if you right click on any of these locations, bring up the properties, you'll see the path to those files. Yep. Databricks uses the ABFS driver to go and connect. So you can actually take the ABFS path directly from here, copy it. If I flip over to Databricks real quick. Oh man, that's easy. The thing I like, like from the Databricks side, if you already have like some implementation in Databricks, but you wanted to switch it over, Yep. Just change the, the location. All you got to do is change the path. I mean, this one was reading from a bunch of locations. It could have been reading from one lake. In this case, it was actually reading from another storage account. Right. Does a few transformations and then writes it back. And this was originally pointing to a different ADLS storage location. All I did was change this one line and I pointed it to the lake house we had there. And if you yeah. look at the URL here, there's always one one lake. So yeah. the storage account is always the same. The container information, if you're used to ADLS terminology, yep. is just the workspace. Nice. And then this is the lake house and the type of data item, so lake house yep. that we were looking at the name, and that's it, just shows up there. Wow. Can read, I can write directly from Databricks or any application that's compatible with ADLS Gen wow. 2. That's bananas, and that's why he bought the shirts. Well, if you think that's crazy though, ask me how this table got here. You see anything special about it? Looks like a table, again, mm -hmm. if I right click on it, it looks like files. If I told you this data is not actually in one lake. Oh, okay. It's actually not even in Microsoft. This data is actually sitting in Amazon S3. Okay. And we created what's called a shortcut to it. Yep. A shortcut's just a pointer to the data. Whether it's in one lake, whether it's in Azure, whether it's in Amazon S3, it'll look like it's physically here. And to any application, any engine that accesses it, it will also appear like it's physically there. They don't have to know anything about S3. They can just use this data as if you had copied it into one lake. Yeah. But you didn't copy it into one lake. There's only one copy here. And in this case, it's living in S3. Now we can do the same with that table we created earlier. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you want to use the warehouse data with your lake house data, you're doing some unnatural hoops to get it in one place, and a lot of times it will... <laughs> Entails some copying. Yeah, and there's boundaries that you got to fight through. And, there's boundaries. Yeah. And typically, if you follow that data mesh pattern a little bit, you'll have different parts of your organization actually own different parts of the data. Yeah. When you actually go and you, you report on your data and you, and you report on your business, more importantly, you're taking data from lots of places to pull mm -hmm. it together. So today, uh, data duplication. Did I take it from the right source? Did I take it from a copy of the source? Is it up to date? Shortcuts can start to remove that mystery and also not only just simplify the act of not having to copy it, keep you connected to the actual source of data. And so that means I could have data in different workspaces within Fabric. I can reference that through a shortcut, or it could be in Amazon or... Yes, yeah, so I right-click on the table here. And you can do this for tables, you can do this for any folders that you have. It doesn't have to be structured data. Okay. We'll, we'll stick to the structured data for a moment here. I'll say new shortcut. I can take them from already within one lake. Nice. And come from ADLS Gen 2. I'm gonna get from Amazon S3, and there's more in the works. But this essentially just virtualizes it into one lake. Yep. And these things, so if I'm referencing it from another workspace or somewhere else in, in one lake, it's still gonna be mindful of security. Like you can only access yep. what you have access to. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So let's actually go and find that table where we sold your banana shirts. And that was in the, the business KPIs. And this is a fully transactional warehouse now that we're gonna combine with a fully non-transactional lake house. <laughs> I can explore here right from the one lake data hub. We see our schema, we see our two tables, we see our sales, create it. So just create that reference to it. Click on sales, we can immediately start exploring the data. Wow. Should we sell anything else while we're at it? We've got some amazing socks. We'll call them Patrick socks. <laughs> I think they sold about 10 of those. And because we didn't copy the data, I don't have to actually now manage another ETL into another location. Whoever loaded the data, they're yeah. responsible for keeping that data up to date. But when we look at anywhere you reference that, it's just there. I can load this to oh, Spark. Gosh. I can start building Power BI reports directly on this. The cool thing about this too is sometimes when you're when you're designing a data strategy, you're looking at the skill sets your teams have, and you have some teams who are just coming from the Spark side of the world, or coming from the pure data engineering. Yep. Let them work with SQL. Let them work with Spark. Yeah. Let them work with their engine of choice if they're not even coming from within Fabric. 
everybody here builds the same data lake. Yep. And and that data resides in one lake and it can be referenced in other spots. Yep. Including Power BI. All right, Josh, thank you so much for walking us through that. One Lake is amazing and I'm sure there's a lot more that we can cover in other videos. Let us know in the comments below what you want to know about One Lake or what questions that you have and we'll we'll get those answered and or like spin up some more videos on it. If you want to continue your journey learning about Microsoft Fabric, check out the playlist up above. As always, thank you so much for being here. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.